to Threading the Pearls of the Book of Revelation, Session 25, The Woman in Heaven, Part 2, The Dragon. In this session, we'll be looking at chapter 12, verses 10 through 18, in which the accuser is cast down. We find this in verse 12, where it says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. And the dragon persecutes the woman. But the woman is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. And in our study we'll explore what all of these things mean. As we discovered in the last session, chapter 12 represents all of history, from Genesis until now. And in the second part of this chapter, we enter into what is known as Jacob's Trouble, the three and a half years of great tribulation, which will be a time more terrible than any that has ever come before. And so we begin in chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come. In Exodus chapter 3, the Lord said, I know their sorrows. I have come down to deliver them and to bring them up. Does this sound familiar? For this is what the Lord has done in the past and will do again. For salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. As we find in Psalm 72, He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him, and his enemies will lick the dust. Yes, all kings shall fall before him, all nations shall serve him. This is the kingdom of our God. Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And now has come the authority of his Christ. Again from Psalm 72, Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will break in pieces the oppressor, and they shall fear you as long as the sun and the moon endure throughout all generations. For the accuser of our brothers was hurled down. We find the definition of an accuser in Psalm 109. As he loved cursing, so let it come to him. As he clothed himself with cursing as with the garment, so let it enter his body like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be to him like the garment which covers him. For he is hurled down, as Isaiah writes, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations, and accused them before God. Continued from Psalm 109, They have also surrounded me with words of hatred, and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer, day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame him. So how do we overcome our adversary? We read in 1 John chapter 5, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. It is our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And we overcome our adversary by the blood of the Lamb. We may be familiar with Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. But listen to the result of the king's new covenant. Continuing in Zechariah chapter 9. Because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. So we overcome our adversary by the word of our testimony. Again from 1 John chapter 5. And this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Therefore do not love our lives, and do not shrink from death. For greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. 
as Jesus did for us. Verse 12. Therefore, rejoice. And there should be no schism. Members should have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or, if one member is honored, all the members, all of us, rejoice. For we have overcome the adversary, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Therefore, rejoice. Rejoice, you heavens and all who dwell in the heavens. But contrast to that, woe to the earth and the sea. As Isaiah writes in chapter 24, Woe to me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And throughout our study, we have noticed the difference between those who believe and those who focus their lives instead on this earth, on this life. Contrast that to the previous verse, to those who overcome, they do not love their lives. But those who focus their attention on this earth, the inhabitants of the earth, the devil has come down to you. Speaking to the devil, Isaiah says in chapter 14, Hell from beneath is excited about you, to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all of the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all of the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say to you, Have you also become as weak as we? Quite understandably, the devil is filled with fury. But though he is filled with fury, we will see that God has a use for him. For God can use evil men for his purposes. As he describes in Jeremiah chapter 51, You are my battle axe and my weapons of war. For with you I will break the nation in pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. And with you I will break in pieces governors and rulers, and I will repay Babylon. And we will see in upcoming sessions that the woman riding the beast is devoured by the beast to fulfill God's purpose. And the devil knows that his time is short, for he has read in Habakkuk chapter 2 that it will surely come to pass, it will not tarry, because he enlarges his desire and he is like death and cannot be satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. How long? Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the people shall plunder you, because of men's blood and the violence of the land and the city and all of who dwell in it. For the devil knows that this is written about him. Verse 13 And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, and we can see also what happens to the proud, especially to the one who is more proud than all the others. I'll let you figure out who this tree is that Ezekiel is describing in Ezekiel chapter 31. And it says in verse 9, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all of the trees in Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in a height, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have driven him out for his wickedness. Upon his ruin shall all of the fowls of the heavens remain, and all of the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. For he has been hurled to the earth. As was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3, the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, and more than every beast of the field, for on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all of the days of your life. So the dragon, being hurled to earth, pursues the woman. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, and that he might destroy them utterly. For the woman, we remember, had given birth. Again from Genesis chapter 3, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Note this is biologically inconceivable, that she, the virgin, shall give birth to a male child. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. Verse 14 And there were given to the woman two wings of a great eagle. As he did before in Exodus chapter 19, You have seen what I did, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. From Psalm 91, 
Surely he shall deliver you. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. The wings of a great eagle. For those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and fly to the place. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. Into a place prepared for her in the desert. For the wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall give rejoice and blossom as a rose. Say to those who are fearful-hearted, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. For the woman will be taken care of, as is written in Isaiah chapter 26. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation is past. For what comes next? Behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. And she will be taken care of a time, times, and half a time, or one plus two plus one half, or three and a half, or it could be also said one half of a week, which is seven years, divided in half, is three and a half, as in Daniel chapter 9. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end of sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. Now if I said this will happen in the middle of a decade, when would that be? Five years. It is understood when he says, in the middle of one week, the week of years, that he means three and a half years. But Daniel himself questions this in chapter 12. How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? And is answered to him, It shall be for a time, times, and half a time. When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. During the three and a half years we shall see that the power of the holy people will be completely shattered, but they will be out of the serpent's reach. What will be happening while they are out of his reach? We can consult with Ezekiel. As God says in chapter 20, As I live, says the Lord God, with a mighty hand, with outstretched arm, and with fury poured out, I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and there I will plead my case with you face to face, just as I pleaded my case with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So I will plead my case with you, says the Lord God, and I will make you pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. God has told us exactly what he is planning to do. Verse 15 And the serpent cast out of his mouth, for he says in his heart, I shall not be shaken, for generations I shall have no trouble. His mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and oppression, and under his tongue is mischief and iniquity, as he tries to overtake the woman. We return to Ezekiel and find an idiom describing the history of the woman, the remnant of Israel, which seems to end in woe while she is in the wilderness. From Ezekiel chapter 19, Your mother was like a vine in your bloodline, planted by the waters, fruitful and full of branches, because of many waters. But she was plucked up in fury, she was cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried her fruit. Her strong branches were broken and withered, the fire consumed them, and now she is planted in the wilderness. In a dry and thirsty land, fire has come out from the rod of her branches and devoured her fruit, so that she has no strong branch, a scepter for ruling. This is a lamentation and has become a lamentation. And the serpent spewed water. Inasmuch as these people refused the waters of Shiloh that flow softly. So who is that? Who is our living water? Therefore, behold, the Lord brings up over them the waters of the river, strong and mighty, the king of Assyria and all of his glory. A possible title of the Antichrist is the Assyrian. For he will go up over all his channels and go over all his banks. He will pass through Judah, and he will overflow and pass over, 
and he will reach up to the neck like a river to sweep her away. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. The swollen waters would have gone over our soul with the torrent. We return to Daniel chapter 9, which describes the same event, that the end of it will be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. We will read of that war later, as it is called Armageddon. Verse 16. The earth helped the woman. We read in Hosea chapter 13, I am the Lord your God, and there is no Savior besides me. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. When they had pasture, they were filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. For the earth opens its mouth. Now that sounds pretty weird, right? But check out this from Isaiah chapter 45. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. The earth swallowing the river. They might as well sing this song from Psalm 32. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. For the dragon has spewed out of his mouth. And it is asked of him in Psalm 52, Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. Selah. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. For Jesus said that a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. And in Psalm 55, He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Verse 17 And the dragon was enraged, enraged at the woman. And Paul asks in Romans 11, Has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For what does the divine response say? I have reserved for myself seven thousand men, who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant, according to the election of grace. So the dragon went off to make war. From Zechariah chapter 12. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and the rest of her offspring. Written of in Hosea chapter 11. I taught Ephraim to walk. I drew them with gentle cords, with bands of love. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? My heart churns within me. My sympathy is stirred. For those who obey. For all of the house of Israel, all of them in the land, shall serve me, and there I will accept them, says the Lord God. Those who obey God's commandments. For you shall love the Lord your God, and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. Know today that I do not speak with your children who have not known or who have not seen the chastening of the Lord your God. So hold to the testimony of Jesus. For we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Verse 18 And the dragon stood. Now some manuscripts say, I stood, as in Genesis chapter 41, when Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream, I stood on the bank of the river, on the shore of the sea. A burden against the wilderness of the sea, as written in Isaiah chapter 21, as whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it comes from the desert, from the terrible land. The distressing vision is declared. The treacherous dealer deals treacherously, and the plunderer plunders. And we finish with Zechariah chapter 10, that the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. And as we learn of the accuser of our brothers, as we learn of the dragon, 
who is hurled to earth and makes war with the woman and with her offspring. Throughout all of this we know that God's purpose shall be fulfilled, that there is a remnant, those who believe, who shall be saved, even through all of this. And we can take heart that it is not forever. It is for a time and times and half a time that this will happen. So three and a half years until the end of the tribulation. And throughout, God pleads his case to his people. And he has made his case very clear to us in the voice of his Son, in the word of God. And I invite you, I invite us all, to get to know him more. For he is our salvation and our hope.